of people we've had on, you're the most Googleable. Is that is that a word, Mike? Googleable. <laughs> we can Google now. you very easily. <laughs> you know, I care a lot about what you've done as a basketball player. What intrigued me and what got my attention was last May, when everybody had their head down, everybody was wondering and worrying about what was going to happen next. I saw a familiar face on LinkedIn. Yes, I saw a basketball player, but I saw a man who was trying to take what he had crafted for a long time and then equate it to something to help other people and also run a business. Um, I looked at the one video that I saw and now has nearly 17,000 views. So tell me a little bit about that mindset. And like you said, uh, hoodie and sweatpants, that's my everyday attire. So I'm pretty lucky that's my, that's my business too. I had to go find like different areas and different open spots where I could do it because I didn't want a lot of people around just because of the noise factor. And at the time it was, it was early on. So it was like, if you're by somebody, they're gonna scold you. Yeah, I just went out, started doing uh, a bunch of dribbling drills that I was doing growing up. You know, it was just, it was just really stuff that I, you know, learned growing up and stuff that I love to do that kind of passed the time for me when I was working on my game. And at that time it was like, it was really nothing going on, like you said. So. Um, it was kind of my way of trying to help out parents or kids and get them out the house or just get them doing something besides, you know, on the phone and video games and TV and just trying to keep them active. And, and it kind of took on a, you know, a life of its own, really. Like you said, it had 17,000 views at one, in that one video. I remember another one that had like 30,000. Um, I was getting hit up from people like, you know, California, Texas, Hawaii. Like coaches asking for themselves and their team, but parents just really kind of thanking me like, Oh man, like you got you got Chris, you got Billy outside. You know he's he's finally doing something. He's he's being active. So really, that was kind of what meant more to me than anything. My whole mission was really just to help some people. You know, get them out there and basketball drills, whatever it was. I don't care if you never played basketball in your life. You know, during this time, it'd give you something to do and take your mind off of really everything else that was going on. So like I did an article with ESPN about it, um, and it kind of just spread like wildfire, man. And, and um, yeah, it was, it was awesome, man. I was just happy to help out. And again, it was basketball, but I'm using basketball to help out people. It's about me sharing that knowledge that I've learned and, and, and hopefully, you know, when somebody else takes a hold of it, they'll do the same thing that I'm doing, share it with somebody else and so on and so on. Your message resonates. Like, and I just being, you know, guys in business locally, you know, we've always networked and been able to go out and build relationships. Usually this would be a cup of coffee with somebody, everything being shut down in the spring. And you know, we had to figure out a way to kind of keep moving and keep making people aware that we're there and be relevant. We led by serving first, and then the dividends have been not necessarily dollar signs, but people. And then those people turn into relationships that then just, you know, it just keeps doubling down. So it matters if someone's putting their face out there and trying to help people in some way, in some capacity right now, it resonates with me. So, um, so I'm going to hit you with another stat. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, Syracuse has done so much for me, you know, at my time here till now, like they still treat me like I'm on the team. So um, it, it was the least I could really do to try to help back the community that has helped me so much. And, you know, besides the turkey drive we did, you know, try to do like shoe drives and free basketball clinics and coat drives and, you know, anything to really just, just help out in the community. I think the biggest thing that, that we just touched on a second ago was somebody else sees me doing it. So now they want to do it. And now somebody sees them doing it and now they want to do it. Here in Syracuse, it's a lot of need for a lot of different things, you know, and, and things that we take for granted. Thank, a Thanksgiving dinner, uh, you know, a turkey dinner, it's, it's, it costs $20 to get a turkey. It's kind of like mind boggling to think that, right? But it's a lot of people five minutes down the street who can't afford that. Like the 27th of this month, we're giving away hats, gloves, and scarves. We're like over 400 sets, you know, and, and we're handing them out down in Syracuse, but it's just, you know, just things like that, like go a long way. I, I just remember getting a couple emails from uh, from the people from the Turkey Drive just saying thank you. Like it really uh, made a difference. And, and like, you know, some as little as that, like, you know, making a big difference in somebody's life is like, dang, I could do more of that. That's really where my thought process goes, is to really helping these people who can't sometimes help themselves. And, and I've been blessed and fortunate to have a good support group around me in the community to where you know, I can reach out to some people and they can donate money or they can come and volunteer and help out. So I'm fortunate to have that support and have the platform here in Syracuse where I can get it out and really help these people who need it. Yeah, I mean, I, I can only imagine the look on the parents' face when they serve that turkey. And the youngsters at the table may not know what a blessing it was. Man, that's, that's deep. You impact a lot of eyeballs that day, I'm sure.
Yeah, I mean, it was it, like it gives me goosebumps kind of thinking about it. Somebody reached out to me and emailed me, said they haven't been working since March. Like, it's December. I can't even imagine that. Like, and now, you know, whatever the rent is, like, I don't know if they furloughed the rent, but now they got to worry about that now. That's like, little stuff that, you know, we might take for granted. So I'm just, you know, fortunate enough to be in a position where I can help out. And that's what I want to do. Like, that's what I want, whether it's through basketball, turkey drives, coat drives. I want to help out people. And like you said, Pete, I think when you're when your focus and your vision is to help other people, everything else just kind of comes together. Right. That's my experience. Like that's that's what's happened with me. Like I've been doing these things and then it's just kind of like something else comes comes about from it. You know, yeah. so just going to try to get, keep continuing to help out the best I can. So let's talk about hats and gloves and then let me run an idea by you that summer I was speaking with a colleague at work and she was explaining how they used to do a, a sneaks and cleats drive in their high school, their kids' high school back in the day. And she's like, you know what? We really should try to ramp that back up. I'm like, yeah, we should. I'm thinking you're our guy to help us figure out how do we launch a sneaks and cleats drop off for all these kids who, you know, show up to practice with, you know, sneakers and they're trying to run on grass and then it's play soccer and a pair of of uh of sneaks that have seen their day so what do you think sneaks and cleats drive is that something we can do oh yeah no question i mean as far as the sneaker sneakers go we could we could definitely get people together to help out with that and then um, it's funny that you said the cleats part because one of my friends latavius murray who who plays for the new orleans saints that goes together cleats right football players wear cleats and i was actually just talking to him um, the other day, he's actually getting his foundation going and he wanted to do some stuff in the community. So that could be a possibility right there. I, I could reach out to him and um, I know he would love to, to be able to do something back home in, in, uh, in Syracuse where he's from. So Yeah, I mean, do you, I think about my own kids and, you know, they it's probably a, a cleat for a season or a sneaker for a hoop season and maybe their shoes, their feet have grown. The next year, I got this cleat or sneak that looks pretty damn good and we give it you know, it's a goodwill, but I would love to get it directly into the neighborhoods that it needs to go and thousands of them at once. Um, so I, I would love to, to have that conversation offline and figure out, you know, let's let's use all our connections and let's let's figure out a way to get these kids. Because you know what? At the end of the day, these kids have to get back outside and the whole mental health thing we talked about before in the sports. It's just it's got to start. And. It's just imperative that these kids are outside. So you're talking about all the kids that you're helping. So I'm gonna pause you for a second. So you're, I know you're a father. You have a daughter, correct? I have two, 12 two, and two. 10. All right, 12 and 10. I have kids that are a little bit older, as does Mike. You know, this whole thing that's going on with in the world, right? There's a lot of uncertainty. And as a parent, it's, a, it's an uneasy time. Uh, as a human, it's an uneasy time, right? The point is, mental health for parents um, and people that are alone or, or that can't see their family for whatever reason is running rampant, right? Depression, anxiety, suicide, drugs, all those things. Your podcast you're doing. A lot, you know, there's not a lot of new movies coming out. There's not a lot of new shows. Everything's been frozen for a year. You guys are tapping into an energy from the past, right? And the in the future and the present with the energy of sports and where it's been missing. I think it's putting the smiles, it's putting smiles on a lot of adults' faces too, just to have some form of normalcy, to laugh, to, yeah, it comes through. And I think, I don't want you to overlook the power of, of that and how you're helping people, fathers, mothers, coaches. They're probably grabbing a lot more than you can imagine just from seeing you doing something normal with, with people they remember. So I appreciate you doing that. Oh man, I think I, you hit it on the head. Like mental health right now is huge. Like, you know, besides the virus, like I think a lot of people are dying just from, you know, what depression causes, whether it might be, you know, suicide rates going up or drug use or overdose, alcohol. It, it's a lot of stuff going on and, and, and it's been overlooked forever, right? People really like, ah, oh, get over it, right? Just deal with it. Like, and everyone deals with things differently. Like I've been through it, like I've been depressed. And sometimes it's like, why am I depressed? You know what I mean? Like, why? it's just kind of, but it, you can't explain it. It's something that just kind of comes over you, right? And then you got to figure out how to deal with that. Now add on, you can't pay your bills. You don't have any food on the table. So yeah. in, in this kind, this podcast right here, like I said, it was just kind of something that came about 
you know, Jeff Goodman, who's a college basketball analyst, he reached out to me and he saw me doing some stuff and he was like, hey, we got an opportunity here. Do you want to do that? And that's that's another one of those doors that opened up. And really think, I didn't really think about it like that, like as far as the podcast. But now that you kind of mentioned it, it does. It could be like that for sure. Like it, it could give those people an outlet just for an hour, you know, because people, whether it's 10 minutes or two hours, that 10 minutes is is a break from what's going on in your mind and maybe some of those you know uh stories or you know encouraging stories whatever it may be can can lift somebody up to to propel through what they're going through so i'm just happy to be able to you know get on there and, and share some stories and have fun with it and um, at the same time try to give people an outlet so let's i think that's a great segue i would love for you to to give us an overview so you've got field of 68 that's like the network Yep. The, so the network is Field of 68, and the creators were uh, Rob Douster and Jeff Goodman, who are some of the best college basketball writers um, and analysts that, that there are. Um, so they came up with this network, and then um, from this network, they kind of expanded to uh, Syracuse, Gonzaga, Indiana, uh, North Carolina. So And, and all these people who do these po separate podcasts are all former players, like uh, Dan Dickow is doing Gonzaga. I'm doing Syracuse, AJ Guyton's doing Indiana, Shaman Williams is doing North Carolina. So all these guys, you know, played at uh, their respective schools, but played at a high level. At first it was like, I never did anything like this. Like I'm, you know, I haven't really just got in front of the mic and talk, but you know, like, like anything, you know, just kind of trying to learn on the go. And um, each one I do, I get a little bit more comfortable with it. They help me with it. You know, it's, uh, they really are like, hey, just, I just want you to lay back and just talk, just kick it, you know? So, you know, I'm fortunate to have those guys reach out to me and be able to do it it's been fun and then your business itself I mean, from a chronological perspective was it already established before the videos were coming out you, you were already doing camps and programs is that correct yeah so i've it's ed two three hoops so ed is just eric devendorf uh and then two three is my number hoops um and i've if i i've had my business i got my llc probably almost two years ago and it was really, it was really going strong. Like before everything happened, we were having camps and I was doing one-on-one uh, -on -one workouts and I was doing group workouts, you know, two, three times a week. I re every day was packed for me uh, with working out kids. And then the weekends we had camps and, and mini clinics and things like that. Um, and then obviously, you know, when the pandemic happened, you know, gym shut down. So it, it was kind of slow motion, but then we got to adapt. We gotta, if you want, you know, continue to you know, grow your business or keep your business alive, you have to adapt. And, you know, that's when I started to do Zoom workouts with teams, you know, dribbling, ball handling and, and footwork drills. And and then, like you said, the, the, the drills that are in the videos that I were just putting out in the beginning. So um, just had to adapt and, you know, still adapting because it's still, everything's obviously not open like that. But, you know, every business person, they have to pivot, right? They got to figure out at some point in their business how to adapt to, to change it. And, you know, this is one of those times and one of those moments. And um, is it the best? Uh, probably not, but we're going to figure it out. You know, the pivot expression was thrown around a lot, and it, it couldn't be more true, having to just be uh, ever evolving at this point because you don't know what's next. For a guy who's only been in business two years, you're saying, saying a lot of things that, that we would normally hear from someone who's been in business for a long time. So. I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of people in my corner who helped me out too. Um, you know, one of my really good friends, Todd Roosh, who owns PPS Printing and Promotional Solutions. And that's been, he's had that business for 10 plus years. And and you guys know to have a business run for over five years is, is, is pretty tough. So for him to have that for 10 plus years, and he's given me a lot of pointers. He's just helped me out and, um, you know, how to run it. Because, you know, I'm a basketball guy and this business side of things was kind of new to me. And it's a lot more to it than just basketball, right? It's about, you know, making sure you're organized and um, crossing your T's and dotting your I's and have it, having everything covered. So it's, it's, it's been a learning process. I can't say I've done it by myself because I haven't. You know, I've had, a, I've had a lot of help. And I think with any great business, you're always going to have that support and help from other people. And, and, and great yeah. people always have, have great support. You know, if anyone says they've done it by themselves, then either they're lying or that you're pretty damn good. You know, I'm just fortunate enough to have, have the support and have people helping me along the way. You know, it's going to be ups and downs. I think you just got to expect that, you know, and nothing's going to be perfect, but you know, this is my journey. Like everybody's journey is different. I'm just accepting mine and I'm kind of rolling with the punches and, and, and trying to figure out as I go. So, so, you know, while we're talking about Todd, I looked at my connection with him. And it dates back nine years, like 2011, okay. he and I connect on LinkedIn. 
And I don't know how that all came about, but watching him support you and doing a little connect the dots, I think we figured out that maybe the turkey drive was maybe hosted at his place of business. Was that where yeah. the turkeys were handed off? Uh, you know, I'm going to reach out to Todd at some point and acknowledge him and and say we should grab a virtual cup of coffee or something and do what we're doing now, making that city smaller, where he and I have been connected for nine years. Our lives probably cross all the time and we don't even know it. He's one of the you know, most genuine people, like one of the nicest people you, you would meet. I mean, um, and as far as business, like the ultimate businessman, he could sell water to a well. That's just how he is. But <laughs> um, like I've known him for almost 15 years, you know, since I was in school. He's just done a lot for me. He's helped me out. Yeah, fortunate to have him in my corner. I've been in business development for a long time. And Eric Devendorf, I've never heard sell water to a whale before. So you just, me, uh, me you just gave, like gave, me, you gave, gave me something new to run with, my friend. Yeah, because the ice Eskimo <laughs> was just kind of old. Yeah, ice, the Eskimo. Yeah, it was, it was wearing its uh, welcome out for sure. So I appreciate you uh, sprinkling <laughs> some new in. I think to Mike's point, right, it's, um, yes, it's the conversation we're having here. Eric, it's you telling your story, but it's also um, a big thing for us is how do we, how do we leave the conversation today? We always learn a lot um, about the person that comes on, you know, especially through the editing process. I, I can say myself, I walk away with a, um, a higher level of understanding of, of the person that sat in front of me, but then that's great. What do you do with it next, right? It shouldn't be a door that slams. It's like, how do we really take the things we learned about what you're doing and the people that you've mentioned? It brings that human element of, of relationships and uh, really doubling down on, on synergies and pushing that forward to the future and you know that give and take mentality so i think that's awesome that you're uh, you're teamed up with a guy like that so yeah that i mean that's what it's all about relationships you know that's you know when i was young i really didn't i really didn't know obviously i was just kind of going through it it was just basketball for me but as i got older uh, came back finished my degree got on staff it's uh, you know I, i've learned just from watching other people and, and that's some good advice I got um, from one of my good friends. Either you're learning what to do or you're learning what not to do, but you're learning. And so every situation, you, you got to be aware, you know, okay, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I can put that into what I'm going to do. But yeah, it, it all comes down to relationships. That's that's what makes the wheel spin, right? That's yeah. that's what makes it go. So yeah, man, it's I'm fortunate to, to learn for, from some good people. And, you know, I'm happy to come on here and, and, and share my story. And, and like you said, make the community smaller because hopefully somebody can see this and you know reach out to you guys or reach out to me and you know make something happen looking through the archives of all the different people and what they said and, and who who you are you also you reflect it in your words of, of your story it's great that you're candid uh, you seem to be genuine you're not afraid to, to tell people what you've been through or what's going on and uh, that's three quarters of those relationship building skills that people need is just to be able to be vulnerable and show people that you're you're not a, a robot you know yeah, my parents taught me from day one, you know, be real, be genuine, be who you are. I mean, this is a part of my story, like the ups and downs that I went through, like it's, it's a part of me. It's a part of what makes me who I am and brought brought me to where I am now. And it, it made me better. Like I learned from it. Um, you know, if it was something bad, it was a mistake. You know, now I know what not to do. Again. I remember like when I was young, I, you know, we all get caught up in it, like trying to be somebody else or trying to you know, make somebody else happy because this is what they think or whatever. No, I'm, I'm going to do it to what makes me happy. And then if they yeah. like that, then they can get with it. If they don't, then yeah. you, you can just, you can go ahead. But, and, and then as far as that edge goes, um, it, you don't have to talk trash on the court. You don't have to do that. But for me growing up, that's, that's how I grew up playing. Like I was always, I was always the younger guy playing with older guys and they were always talking to me like that. So that, that's how it kind of, developed in me like that gave me more confidence in myself like when I make a shot if I'm not talking to myself I'm, I'm talking to you right in front of me and, and some people can get it you know misunderstood anything you do if you really love it and you want to be and you want to be good at it you're going to have that passion for it and that love for it and, and and everyone shows it in a different way like you could love something but you know you don't have to talk trash or say that but that's just what came out of me you know my passion if you I mean you see it in the 6 OT game, when I hit the shot, I jumped right up on the scores table. That was nothing planned. That was that was pure like emotion and fire inside of my belly. Like from all the, you know, the hard work, the the times people don't see people don't see that. You know, I'm when I was chipping the ice. We talked about that earlier, chipping the ice and shoveling the snow and in the gym by myself, sweating and going through the aches and pains. Like that's all that that's coming out. You know, in, in that one moment. And you know, if you don't have it, then 
you know, it's like you're dead, right? You like you said, you want to be you want to be active. You you want to at least try and um, show people that you care on the court. That's how it came out of me. So um, I wouldn't change that for anyone. Like that's that's what gives me my my edge, so to speak. That's what really kind of propelled me. I was going to ask you about is mentors. Who stands out to influence you when you when you got something you got got to push around in your brain? Who you reach into or what do you do? Well, again, uh, I mean, Todd, like I said, he's one of my best friends. Um, and it, besides business, like we're together like a lot of times during the week, you know, and it, it doesn't have to be, we're not talking about business. We're just talking about just regular, that's my guy. So um, I always go to Todd, you know, when I have a question about something or, hey, what do you think about this? And then um, I have two other friends, Andre Ricks, he grew up with me in Michigan and he, he actually has his own business in Las Vegas. He just wrote a book and it's published in, in Barnes and Noble. His, he has a real powerful story, but he was born in like a real east side of Detroit, which is a real bad area. He really came from the bottom and, and worked his way up, you know, to where he's a, a real successful guy. So, and then another one of my guys out here, Mookie Jones, he's a dean of students over at a, a charter school called On Tech. And these are just guys that I trust. You know, I trust them to give me a real answer. And, and I, I know these right. three guys, they, they're really going to give me the real. And those are the type of people I want around me. I'm not one for a big entourage. I want, you know, one or two people that are going to be real with me and have the same vision. You know, it doesn't have to be the exact same vision, but wants to do better for themselves and, and the people around them. And, and, you know, those three people that I just named, like, and like you said, I with all the stuff I'm doing in the community, besides Dre, who's in, in Vegas, those two guys, Todd and Mookie, do it with me every single time. Like, Mookie was there handing out turkeys with me. Obviously, you said Todd had it at, at, at his place, and, you know, the gloves, hat, scarves, giveaway, they'll be there with me again, you know, handing them out. So these are people that, besides, like, you know, they help me in my business development. I, I like them as people. I, I love them as people. You know, these are, these are my best friends, so... Um, those are the type of people that I want around me. You know, you made, you talked about breaking the ice and, and shoveling off the driveway. And it, it got me thinking that when my kids were a little bit younger, there was a day that they knew they wanted to come home after school. And guess what? It rained all night, but it was supposed to be a nice day. And while they're waiting for the bus, Connor and Macy were out there sweeping off the driveway. So when they got home after school, the driveway was, was dry. And uh, they were thinking <laughs> ahead. I mean, shit, they were thinking like eight hours ahead. And at that moment, I knew, you know, I'm like, these kids, these kids, they're going to be ballers. Uh, Connor ended up playing in high school, but he's a lacrosse kid. But Macy's, all she wants to do is play basketball. And she, you know, Section 3 says, let's wait till January and we'll decide then. And if the state doesn't open up the hoops, I'm moving out because she's going to lose her ever-loving mind if she can't play basketball this year. Yeah, man, it, it, it's tough. Like you said, I mean, we don't want these kids just in their rooms, on their phones. I mean, as a parent, you try as much as you can to, you know, monitor their phones and monitor their internet, but there's only so much you could do for real, right? I mean, you can tell them what to do, but if they're going to do it, they're going to do it, you know, and you try to tell them right and wrong. Um, but at the end of the day, they need something to do. So where do they go? They go to their phone and they go to talking to their friends. So hey, I think it's just, it's unfortunate, man, that they're canceling the season. I mean, I get it. I understand the health, healthy and, and, and safety and all that, but we can figure out a way to do it because now we're talking about mental health and we're talking about kids developing for their future. This year has stunted so many kids' growth, right? It's just from a mind standpoint and a physical standpoint, all that, you know? So um, it, it's unfortunate, man, but uh, we got to figure out a way to, to help these kids out as much as we can because it's different nowadays like it's so much you can get into it's so much you can get into it they they can fall off the rails real quick and uh they need that outlet they need that socialization they need that leadership they need the you know just uh, just burn off the, the the mental part of it of the sweat there's so many reasons and um you know i think it, that ties right back to you and and doing your podcast with the training now more than ever, especially coming in the winter. Just keep it going if you can. No, absolutely. You're 100% right. When you're playing basketball, what was the hardest thing in your personal life that you had to balance at the same time in your career? And if it's too personal, then skip. For me, you know, when I was playing basketball professionally, I was I was going back and forth overseas. And, and you know, it was a time to where my girls got old enough to where they got to be in school. 
you know, I've spent time away from my family, away from my girls, and, you know, anyone who uh, spends a long period of time away from their family, you know, for me, it was, you know, seven, eight months at a time, you know, so that, that was tough for me, being able to try to, you know, balance it, like, hey, am I doing the right thing? Like, I got to feed my family, but at the same time, like, I'm missing out on this time that I could never get back for my kids. So I struggle with that a lot. That's why I kind of ended my career prematurely. You know, because I wanted to be able to be here with my girls and, and you know, spend time with them and, and watch them grow up. Because at the end of the day, I can't get that back. You know, my daughter, she'll be, when she's 18, 19 years old, you know, I want her talking about, you know, the time she spent with her dad and her mom, not uh, just her mom. That really affected me, man. It was, like, real hard for me, like, super hard. And, and I love ball. Like, I love basketball. Like, that's, you know, it's in my blood. That's what I do. Like, that that's what made me me, for real. Like, but... You know, when I had my girls, it was just like, it was a whole nother, a whole nother thing that meant to me. Like it was, it was different. Like that was my world right there. That's what, that's why I'm doing it, right? That's why I'm doing what I'm doing is for them. So it was, it was tough, but you know, I made that final decision to be able to come back here with them and, and, and see them. And, and still like what I do, it's, I'm still going to have times where I spend, you know, you know, spend time away from them. You know, it's just, a, it's just a part of what I do, but you know, fortunately not, you know, not like eight months to a year. You know, so that that was tough for me. I, I can feel how that would be uh, that'd be a big deal. It's cool that you're home, you're building something, you're able to see them, they're able to see that. Are they involved in, in basketball? I saw one of your daughters shooting a, maybe a foul shot. You know, my youngest, she's a cheerleader like through and through, like she does it year round. You know, they travel, like right now, obviously they're not traveling, but um, when they were able to, they were going to Rhode Island and Virginia Beach. and. So it was big time. They were they were competing like with with other teams around the country. And then uh, my oldest, who was probably the most athletic, she's just trying to figure out what she really likes to do. Like she was she was doing softball, she was doing lacrosse. Like you said, man, I'm missing those sports. Like right now, she's in the seventh grade, but still they're not able to do. She did cross country earlier this year, but it was cut short. So yeah, I'm missing those opportunities for her to be able to like you know get involved in sports. Like that's that's big for. Powerful stuff. The only other thing I have that relates to it, you know, I built a business for 10 years from the ground up and it was, um, I was here, I was local, but at the same time, I spent a lot of time outside of the, the walls of our, of our house. And uh, we have four kids. Um, and, you know, um, it hits you when you see a picture of, of them when they were, you know, young and you're like, holy cow, how did that, how did that time go by so quickly? And it, it breaks your heart when you know that you, um, yes, you're doing what was right for them at the time, which you, which you, you know, which you thought was proper, which is, you know, feeding them, <laughs> clothing them, um, yeah, right. and all those essential things, but you also can get lost in it too. And you can be, it can be, um, where it, it takes, um, you know, too much of that critical time. Do you, like you said, you can't get back and pictures are, are good. You can go back and look, but you, they also can be filled with, um, some negative too, because you're looking at all the stuff you really missed and the opportunities you could have had to be to be more. Maybe again, you you gotta love your fate, right? You can't you can't look in the past. You gotta look forward. And so that was the first thing. And then the second thing was, if there's anything I can do to help with anything you're doing, um, I don't want to overcrowd you. I know you don't want a lot of people around you, but at the same time, if it's helping <laughs> no. other people, I'm not gonna be an entourage guy. I promise. Oh uh, no, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to put it out there like that. It's just, <laughs> I'm a, I'm definitely an approachable guy. Yeah, but it's just you know. I'm, I'm gonna keep my circle like this, you know? But no, I mean, anything like, you know, for an event, if I can be, just be there to literally, um, you know, capture it, help hand out the turkeys, move stuff, uh, park cars, whatever. So if you need somebody, um, I'm here to help. I appreciate that. And, you know, I'm getting a flyer made up for this next event. So I'll send you guys the flyer and, you know, you feel free to stop by. I want to help with the hats and gloves. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it'll be down on the south side of Syracuse off South Ave. It's a church called the Well of Hope Church. I know the pastor there, one of my good friends, he's out of Syracuse now, but he uh, he did a lot of stuff out of there and he he made that connection with me. And it's right in the area where people need it. You know what? The biggest thing I really learned from doing stuff is you just got to take action. Like you got the idea, don't let it sit there. Go ahead and do it. Put it to work. Like Like I remember, I didn't, in my notes in my phone, I just write it down like, oh, I want to do this. And then I did it. And then I wrote another thing down. Then I did it. Like, it's just about taking action and doing it. Like, so many people have great ideas, but they're scared to like, oh, this won't, this won't go right. It might not. Just figure it out as you go, you know? And, and again, like, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have, a, you know, a lot of people who can make stuff happen, but you got to take action, man. Like, that's the beginning. Like, you got to take that first step 
in, into what you're trying to do. Um, and a lot of people don't even get that far with it. So hopefully people can kind of look at, at our conversation and be like, oh, damn, like I got to go ahead and, and take action and, and, yeah. and start it and figure it out as we go. We appreciate what you're doing and we appreciate you coming on and sharing your story because, um, you know, Wikipedia leaves a lot of shit out that you got to get them to update, my friend. Yeah, no, I mean, I <laughs> trust me, I, I, the internet, the internet does its own thing. I, I already know, but um, what we can control is what we do and, and what we do going forward. And um, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. So I appreciate you guys having me on and we'll definitely uh, get together and I'll send you guys the information about the 27th and, and hope to see you guys there. Have a great holiday if we don't talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. I'll keep you guys informed on everything going on. I appreciate you guys. All right. Thank you. Be good. Thanks, Aaron. I grew up in Bay City, Michigan, which is a small city, probably 30, 35,000 people. Not a big city, not a lot of basketball players, not a lot of athletes, period. It was uh, a real, like, blue-collar city. Um, and, and Michigan's a blue-collar state, but, um, you know, like, factories and, and, and jobs like that. So, But I was fortunate enough to be introduced to the game early from my father, probably about seven, eight years old. And he played, he played, he's from Saginaw, Michigan. He played, but nothing... You know nothing like college or, or pro or anything like that but he introduced the game to me he got i remember he got me a rim you know nothing crazy but it was a classic backboard just what i needed right and and then like you said you know you grew up shoveling snow i mean michigan weather is, is pretty similar to here so I, I just remember waking up going outside you know before school 5 36 in the morning chipping, chipping ice shoveling snow i remember my neighbors yelling out the window go back to sleep you know just just stuff like that but you know the first time i was introduced to the game like i fell in love with it you know and and my driveway was the first court where i really you know honed my skills and and you know practice day in and day out you know i had we had the ymca down the street where you know we got together and, and you know played with with a group of my buddies but i'm um, really the first court where i really you know got into it fell in love with it and honed my skills was outside of my backyard you know rain shine sleet snow you know i was out there I knew from like seven, eight years old, like I'm playing ball. Like not a lot of people really fall in love with something that early on, right? So I was kind of fortunate enough to really fall in love with the game early on. And then it's, it's opened up a lot of doors that I really never thought, you know, would be open.